Can you imagine your daughter going missing one day, reporting it to the police the next, and then discovering her decaying body three weeks later? This is the heartbreaking story of Elisa Lam and her family, who are searching for justice for their daughter nine years later. Elisa Lam was a Chinese-Canadian student visiting Los Angeles when she experienced something strange inside the Cecil Hotel. To this day, police accounts are ambiguous, and it is unknown how Elisa died or who killed her. It's a heartbreaking story that deserves to be investigated more. That being said, let's get started. Elisa Lam was an only child and a modest young lady who enjoyed fashion and reading. Although her parents were from Hong Kong, she was born in Vancouver, Canada. Her parents started an Asian restaurant in Vancouver before assisting in maintaining the famed Chinese restaurant Paul's. Elisa was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression as a teenager. Bipolar disorder presents as depression interspersed with periods of unusually heightened mood known as mania. She was required to take a vast list of prescription medications. However, she enjoyed a calm life with her family and was never aggressive or attempted suicide. Elisa, who was 19 then, started writing down her battles with mental illness and pictures of models in 2010. She maintained a blog on Blogspot for two years under the title Ether Fields. In one of her posts, she wrote, I spent about two days in bed hating myself. Elisa's entries were frequently about her depression. She was harsh on herself for not going for a run, overeating, and coming up with excuses to do both. Having experienced a relapse at the beginning of the current school year, Elisa dropped many classes and felt completely confused, as she described in a blog entry published in January 2012. She used a Chuck Palahniuk quote as the heading of her post. You're always haunted by the idea you're wasting your life. Elisa also used that frightening quote as the first line of her blog. She was concerned that her transcript would look suspect with so many withdrawals and that she would be unable to continue her studies and attend graduate school. A little over two years after beginning to blog, Elisa announced that she would switch to a different platform, using the handle Nouvelle Nouveau. Elisa launched a Tumblr blog dedicated to fashion photographs, quotes, and a few of her own words. As an epigraph, she utilized the same quote, However, we must remember Elisa as a person, not a diagnosis. She was a bright young woman who attended the University of British Columbia and had big plans for her future. Unfortunately, none of these dreams came true. January of 2013. She traveled to the States and her family never saw her again. On December 21, 2012, Elisa stated that she would fly out to California to visit a school in Santa Clara in hopes of transferring there. She even shared her schedule on Tumblr and invited anyone who wanted to meet her on the road to do so. Elisa announced on January 9, 2013, that she had made a new Facebook page for the sixth time due to paranoia. She said, this is the start of her depression and she is feeling very low. Elisa arrived in San Diego on January 22 via Amtrak and inner city buses after getting confused in an airport and missing her flight. Elisa went to the San Diego Zoo and posted images she took there on her Tumblr over the next few days. She added, Every once in a while I do something entirely impulsive and reckless, like tell the guy I just met I like him to her post. Elisa landed in Los Angeles on January 26. On the first night, she stated on her Tumblr that she went to a speakeasy with some buddies. On the 28th, she booked into the Cecil Hotel, redesigned as Stay on Main. The Cecil Hotel was a low-cost hotel in downtown Los Angeles with a significant homeless population. While some floors were for guests like Elisa, others were for people who resided on Skid Row for short or extended periods. The hotel already had a horrible reputation before Elisa's tragedy. It was a place with a history of suicides and overdoses, in a place where several high-profile serial killers had stayed. It was even the inspiration for American Horror Story, Hotel, which starred Lady Gaga as a vampire living in a penthouse. Elisa first stayed in a shared room. Two days later, her roommates complained about her strange behavior, and the hotel manager transferred her to the fifth floor, 
where she would have her room. Elisa was meant to check out of the Cecil on February 1st and proceed to Santa Cruz for the next stage of her adventure, but she never checked out, and something terrible occurred to her. The complete truth is yet unknown. When Elisa left Canada, her parents made a rule that they would talk on the phone every day. Despite losing her phone once, she spoke to them every day until February 1st. Mr. and Mrs. Lamb traveled to Los Angeles that day and filed a missing persons report with the LAPD. Throughout the next three days, the police sought hundreds of clues, but they were grasping at straws. Katie Orphan, the bookshop manager, last saw Aliso while she was buying presents for her family back home. Katie described Elisa as very lively and very friendly. Sergeant Rudy Lopes explained to the officers that they could only search a room if they had reasonable cause to suspect a crime had been committed. After anxiously searching for clues and coming up empty-handed, the LAPD went public on February 6, inviting everyone to keep an eye out for Elisa and to come forward with any relevant information. Another awful week followed, with Elisa's parents growing increasingly concerned. With the police increasingly eager for results, on February 14th, the police made a significant breakthrough in the case, an unusual security camera video from the Cecil Hotel elevator. The video went viral almost instantly. It received 3 million views and 40,000 comments on the Chinese platform Yuku in just 10 days. Many people found the ending too disturbing to watch. The video shows Elisa agitatedly entering and exiting an allegedly malfunctioning elevator. Was she going through a bipolar episode? Had she neglected to take her medication? Was she fleeing from something? The police were baffled about how this tape might be linked to her disappearance, but they were suspicious. However, they couldn't close the case until February 19th. A hotel employee was also warned of strange smelling water and low pressure faucets. So he walked up to the hotel rooftop to inspect the water tanks. Inside was Elisa Lem's naked, floating body. The coroner issued a report on the 21st stating that Elisa drowned by accident and that this was primarily due to her bipolar disease. However, the case had garnered international notice by this point, and many people were dissatisfied with the coroner's report. Simply not believing Elisa drowned by accident in a massive water tank on the hotel's roof. To begin with, Cecil Hotel guests had no access to the hotel's rooftop. The doors, stairs, and entrance to the hotel's rooftop are all closed, with only employees having the past codes and keys, and any effort to force them open would have set off an alarm. Elisa couldn't have gotten to the rooftop unless someone drove her there. And if she was shown the path, it suggests she did not drown by mistake. Then there's the CCTV elevator film, which sparked hundreds, if not thousands, of internet comments. Apart from the unnerving sight of Elisa, who appears to be talking to herself and becoming agitated, many of the video's viewers disputed it, but a whole minute of the video is missing, implying that someone tampered with it to conceal evidence. However, because the resolution is so low, it is hard to tell whether or not a minute is missing. Then there were rumors that Elisa's mouth was purposely blurred in the footage to conceal anything she was saying. However, the police never investigated these claims. Then there were rumors of otherworldly entities seizing Elisa's body, although making such assertions ignores Cecil Hotel's heinous history. Richard Ramirez, a serial killer, stayed at the Cecil Hotel in 1985 and murdered 13 women. Jack Unterweger was detained as a homicide suspect in 1999. There were also multiple examples of visitors taking their own lives in the Cecil Hotel, many of whom were from Skid Row, and had given up on their ambitions and dreams. The most irritating aspect is that, despite the hotel's long history of death and murder, none of it can be related to Elisa to solve the riddle of her death. Drowning alone in a water tank on a rooftop, she didn't have access to, it sounds unlikely. The following was a popular theory among those following her case. Elisa was stalked through the hotel, murdered, and brought to the rooftop so her assailant could dispose of her body in a position where no one could see the water tank. 
Elisa stated her fear that her outspoken temperament would bring her into trouble in previous Tumblr entries. She wrote, My mouth will be my downfall and will get me into trouble, and I'm going out tonight. She once wrote, I really hope no creeper follows me. Thus, Alyssa likely got into a fight with someone in the hotel, and they decided to come after her in the most heinous way possible. There is, however, a lot of evidence against the murder theory. First and foremost, Elisa's body bore no evidence of struggle or damage. Second, none of her belongings were stolen, indicating no robbery attempt. Finally, LAPD investigated all CCTV footage within the Cecil Hotel and discovered no one else near Elisa at the time of the elevator clip. The hotel employees were also asked if they saw Elisa with anyone during her stay, but no one noticed anything important or any disagreement that would suggest a murder. Knowing Elisa's bipolar condition, the police concluded that she was the master of her own downfall, but something didn't match up for those following the case or her family. The chief, Lely Coroner, issued a full toxicology report on Elisa's remains in June 2013, revealing that she had no narcotics in her system other than the prescription medications she was required to take. The report, however, contradicts itself several times. The coroner states in the preamble that the evidence is restricted since a large enough blood sample was not given. Then it claims that the police ruled out foul play while also writing that a full review of the circumstances of the case do not support intent to harm oneself, and the manner of death is classified as an accident. So, if Elisa did not commit suicide and no one else killed her, how did she end up unintentionally climbing into a big cylinder tank of water with no set access, lift a heavy lid and fall within? Even with the lid open, getting on top of the tank was exceedingly difficult from numerous perspectives, including access to the rooftop. So deeming Elise's death an accident seems far-fetched. In September 2013, Elise's parents file a wrongful death complaint against the hotel alleging that the management neglected to inspect and seek out risks that posed an undue danger to Elisa and other hotel guests. They sought monetary compensation as well as burial expenses. However, the Cecil Hotel said that it could not have reasonably predicted Elisa entering the water tanks because it was unknown. No accountability could be assigned for her getting to the water tank, regardless of how she got there. The lawsuit was dismissed in 2015. This is particularly ridiculous given that the hotel bears some responsibility for whatever occurred within its walls. Finally, some people following Elisa's case see something extraordinary. The case has an uncanny resemblance to the 2005 horror film Dark Water. A mother and her daughter move into a rundown apartment building, where a malfunctioning elevator and discolored water gushing from the building's faucets eventually lead them to the building's rooftop water tank where they discover the body of a girl who was reported missing from the building a year earlier. Anyone who has seen the film may ask if Elisa had seen it, or if whoever led her to the rooftop tried to replicate a terrifying moment. One last detail suggests that the police had closed Elisa's case. According to the coroner's report, Elisa had antidepressant residues. She had been taking these medications for years, but the anxiety relievers and mood stabilizers were no longer present. This suggests Elisa hadn't taken all her medications for a few days. In the event of bipolar disorder, failing to take these medications can result in a severe psychotic episode. These can include hallucinations, leading to extreme behavior to avoid what they believe is happening to them. One doctor characterizes a patient experiencing a bipolar psychotic episode as disorganized but focused, pacing and waving his hands erratically due to the hallucinations. With that in mind, one can see Elisa seeming attentive while simultaneously moving in a disorderly manner and waving her hands in the air in the CCTV elevator footage. Inexplicably, in the last several years, an anonymous source came forward to the police and told them about one of their relatives who had bipolar disease and committed suicide by falling into a pool. They also stated that throughout his psychotic episodes, this man was constantly drawn to water, which seemed to calm him. Although there is no evidence linking the bipolar disorder to water, 
This strange case could explain Elisa's untimely conclusion. If Elisa was searching for water in the same manner during one of her episodes, it's still unknown how Elisa got to the hotel's rooftop, or if hotel security was so good that the rooftop was unreachable. The hotel may have been trying to avoid a lawsuit by claiming Elisa couldn't have gone upstairs without a key or passcode. Whatever the case, Elisa's life was tragically cut short. Her family will never get the closure they need because of the odd circumstances surrounding her death. Thank you for keeping an eye on us. If you enjoyed this video, don't miss the next one, which will send chills down your spine.